You're going to go uh, spreads, totals, teasers, whatever you got. I'm on player props because we've only got two games to cover here. So take it away. Get us started. Let's go 6-0. What are you looking at for the weekend? All right. I've got a six-point teaser for you. I was excited to see that the Chiefs moved from three and a half up to four at a lot of shops. There's still some three and a half in the market uh, if you're on the other side of this one. But with a six-point teaser, we're going to move the Chiefs up to plus 10, 49ers down to minus one. So 49ers basically just need to win the game, although you could push on that that one leg if they win by one. Uh, you know, this is this is Patrick Mahomes' time in the playoffs. It's difficult to see, to imagine Patrick Mahomes losing by more than 10 points, so that feels pretty safe there. Um, I like the, the Chiefs' defensive matchup in this one. The Ravens don't have a lot of guys on offense that, that scare you. They've got some, you know, above average receivers, but nobody that puts fear into your heart. And on the 49er, in the 49ers side in that game, just like I mentioned, uh, that defensive line, I think, can give the, the Lions trouble in the interior. And Jared Goff is not super mobile. So when you do get that pressure up the middle, uh, that's where you see Jared Goff start to get rattled, you know, uh, throwing interceptions, tipped passes, intentional groundings, things like that. So I'll be looking at that game for our live betters out there, too. See how comfortable Jared Goff looks in that first quarter, mm. and I think that's going to tell you a lot about how the rest of the game is going to look. Uh, from that Chiefs-Ravens game, I'm going to go Rashad Bateman over 23.5 receiving yards. Um, some modest numbers in the divisional round, but when he was called upon, he did come through. Three targets, three catches, for 39 yards in that one, so I think... Lamar might lean on him a bit more this weekend. And I like the way this is trending for Bateman and this bet, including that divisional round game. Bateman has eclipsed 23 and a half receiving yards in four of his last five games, including 54 against Miami, uh, 29 at Jacksonville, 24 against the Rams. And finally, in two playoff games, teams are spreading the ball around a bit against this Chiefs defense. The Dolphins had four guys above this number on wildcard weekend the bills had three and would have had another if Diggs could catch the ball so i'll be looking at bateman to not necessarily have a big game but contribute i like it i've got the 49ers here uh over 51 against the lions total score of course uh you got two really good elite play callers they're going to kind of be emptying their bag so to speak uh to, to get to the super bowl Got a situation here where both defenses are kind of vulnerable to the other team's offense. The the Lions are shaky in their secondary. You can throw deep on them. The 49ers have a deep threat. Brock Purdy, people don't realize it, but he throws a lot of deep passes. And kind of the same thing with the 49ers. We saw Ambry Thomas look pretty shaky last week, uh, cringeworthy at times, kind of panicking when the ball was in the air. And that's something that I think that the Lions uh, could exploit. They certainly have the personnel to exploit in this one. Um, so I like this game going over. It bit me last week. I took the over yeah. in the 49er game, and I was mistaken. Although if Drake Greenlaw had ran that uh, had ran that uh, touchdown back, that would have affected a lot of a lot of people's bank accounts. Um, so, anyways, I'm gonna I'm gonna try the over again this week. That's why I wasn't hitting the dirt. He was doing it for the betters. Anybody that had the Niners, he was trying to find the house. Um, from that uh, Niners game, I'm looking for George Kittle anytime touchdown plus 120. He had a pretty great game against the Packers in the divisional round. Four catches, 81 yards, and a touchdown. Kittle only had six touchdowns in the regular season, and three of those came in one game. So the Niners are really going to need everyone, including him, to step up, up and down the depth chart. And that's regardless if Debo is in or not this weekend. We're recording this early Wednesday morning, so we don't know his status quite yet. But news is supposedly going to come out today. Kittle's going to have to make some plays regardless, and I expect Brock to lean on him in spots. And Auten had a nice game in Tampa Bay's loss against Detroit last week. I suspect that Kittle and the Niners can replicate some of that success in that level against a fairly good Lions defense. Lions allow the eighth most receiving yards to tight ends, tied with the fourth most touchdowns to the position. So I have a feeling that Kittle is going to have a nice little day. Yeah, before I give you my last pick here, I want to also throw out there, people should consider Debo Samuel under on his rushing yards prop. If he doesn't play, then obviously you're going to get your money back. The bet's going to be a no action. If he does play, I think it's going to be a situation where the 49ers are trying to protect his shoulder, and they're not going to be giving him a ton of carries. We've seen Debo Samuel not at 100% in games this season, and we know what that looks like. He's not like 
uh, forcing contact as he usually does. Him and Kittle are just like looking for guys to hit. And so I think that's a situation where where he could play and just have no carries. Um, so something to consider. My last pick here, uh, over 44 and a half in the AFC Championship game. I got to be honest, this is really more of a lean. I don't have as much conviction in this one as the other two. Uh, my numbers come out and say this total is about right at 44, 44 and a half. Um, but it's just a situation where my gut is saying, you know what, you've got some elite QBs um, in this game, in this playoff game. I think we're going to have some points. You got some elite kickers too, by the way. People laugh at me, I think, sometimes because I talk about kickers a lot in my handicapping. But we've seen it this weekend. You, you had Jake Moody get a kick blocked. You had a kicker miss a field goal. The Bills kicker miss a field goal that could have tied the game late. Kickers are important for handicapping, and you've got two of the best kickers in the league, definitely two of the best playoff kickers uh, in the league in this one, too. That matters. And like I said with the last game, both coaches are going to kind of be emptying their bag. You know Andy Reid's got some crazy trick play that we haven't seen before, and he's waiting for a third down in the third or fourth quarter to unleash that magic. And so, again, slightly in here toward the over for me. Last one for me back to the NFC. I'm going CMC, Christian McCaffrey, 30 plus rushing yards in each half, minus 130. So 30 in the first half feels like a lock. This guy has been a killer in the opening half this season. 884 rushing yards on 5.7 per carry during the regular season, not to mention 11 touchdowns. So he should get that done early for the first half of that at least. As a Niners fan, I'd like to think that the Niners are in control of this one as opposed to last week. So hopefully we're up late and we're in a spot in the fourth where we can kill the clock just by giving CMC the ball, more carries, eat up some yards. And the fact of the matter is that much like against Green Bay, he's going to have to be clutched this weekend against a really good run-stopping unit in Detroit. He had some big runs in the second half last week. We're going to need him again. So give me 30-plus rushing yards in both halves on Sunday for our boy. CMC.